Uh, it's a bit tight, tightly packed in the yard, but um, we shall have a detailed look at it. So follow us. Yeah, fabulous indeed. And um, it is a little bit tight in the yard, but brand new boat this. And let's just show you around the outside of it. Here you notice straight away the difference um, from the 6.5 to the 7.5. Um, in fact, it's quite nice that it's in the yard and out the water because we can show you some of that detail then. That's your bow thruster. So we've got a little bit of extra length in the hull, of course, um, uh, to which they've then added as a standard fit the bow thruster. It's, um, <clears throat> it may well, and I'll just check um, for those of you that have watched the 6.5 film, um, on our channel and do have a look for it if you haven't done so yet um, Certainly where we were using our 795 and 895 in Pembrokeshire um, That uh, was a really useful addition um, Because the winds do blow in West Wales and uh, to have that controllability at the front of the boat If you were maneuvering slow speed in and out of your your marina was very useful to have um, so let's just work our way down the side here give you a good look at the outside there's your lashing points for your straps if you're lifting the boat they mark them with little red marks there and look at that butte what a fabulous bit of kit that is 225 mercury here we see the um that's obviously espas power as you saw at the front of the dealership here that's their uh, that's the name of the dealership that we have kindly let us come in and see these amazing boats um, but that's a really cracking Mercury engine there. Stainless steel prop there. Gives you the dimensions of the prop there, which is all to do with your pitch. Um, and uh, angles that they set them up at. Um, and excuse a little bit of, no oops, a little bit of noise in the background. Because um, obviously we're in a working yard here and they're prepping and preparing boats. Getting them ready for some very excited owners, I'm sure. But that's... Uh, that's a look at the outside um, and just before we head inside let's just have a quick look at these as well again because it's out of the water it's really useful to be able to show you these these are your trim tabs these ones in particular are Lenko's um, and uh, work at the helm station where you can control the uh, pitch and roll of the boat using your trim tabs as you're coming up onto the plane um, the trim tabs will go down in the water or up in the water which will alter the shape and line of your boat to get optimal speed and pitch through the water which obviously optimizes not only your speed but of course it optimizes your fuel consumption as well um, do have a look on our channel there's um, I've got a film there which we did about our zip weights that we had on the 895 we had Glencoe's like this on the 795 Mary Fisher but then on the 895 we opted to have uh, zip weights fitted so there's a film there all about those I expect things you know that you would have a similar option um, for this boat where if you uh, paid um, a few extra pounds for the upgrade you'd be able to swap potentially those Lenkos for zip weights uh, which is a slightly, we thought, a slightly better system of control for our boat um, so those are your trim tabs folks and what we can also show you, because we're up on stilts in the yard, is the, how this ladder works on this uh, 7.5 cap camerat. It concertinas up there, as you can see Nicky doing, and then just slides away there and, and clips into place and is held secure in place there. So that's slightly different to the 6.5, which we've just showed you, in that that one was, uh, the ladder actually came up over the top here and was in a little recess here in the swim platform. So that's, uh, that's an immediate difference that we notice here. Uh, obviously the 6.5 in the showroom there, in the INR other film, had the uh, 150 Mercury on it. This one up at the 225 Mercury, so a big jump up in power there. And uh, on the screen you'll see some uh, performance statistics which will probably reflect the fact that uh, we've got quite a big jump in engine size. And of course, yes, there would be a jump in fuel consumption, but um, uh, but the right engine for a bigger and heavier craft Okay, so let's take you up in up on board. I'll slip my slip my flip-flops off And here we go. Nicky's trained me well, haven't you, love? 
train me well to take my shoes off every time we go into a boat. I'm not sure how clean your socks are. <laughs> Sock inspection later. So, starting from the back here as we come through. So there we go. In here they've got your new, uh, brand new mooring lines, which will be uh, which you'd be very excited to unpack if you were if you were had just taken delivery of this. And here's your little hinge gate, which just lifts up slides into position and then drops in you'll see straight away as well they've added um you've got flexi teak added to this which is a sort of um a fake teak covering which is uh, glued on looks really good wears really well and i just think gives um which is why we had it fitted to our 895 why we um because it does give a really nice finish to uh to some of the or a contrast as well to some of the grp hull and all that white that's uh, that's on a lot of your boats so a nice addition that uh, and again on the back you've got the cleats on slanted yeah part of the boat uh, port and starboard yes and similar to the 6.5 here's that really good but but of course a slightly bigger one uh, here's a really good sturdy um ski anchor for your be it your uh, be it your towables or your water skiing or your wakeboarding you name it um, a really strong and secure uh, support at the back there and you can see here with the engine you can see um, the steering fitted here you've got as well with the red underline there that would be your fuel intake um, at the back there and this side Again, nice and easy to access near the back. Got your blue around there, which would be your fresh water intake filler. You'll note as well that they've got the uh, all those standard type universal fittings for the uh, for uh, to get the uh, to get the access hatches off. You can see straight away as well that the layout is similar to the uh, to the 6.5, but. I'm also getting very quickly, having just come from the 6.5, that there is uh, additional storage space underneath here. On the 6.5 we have the side locker there, which we'll, and we'll open this one up for you here so you can see in this one. This, um, there's the side locker, um, and down there um, they've got life vests in here. Um, and you've got some water piping coming through there, but a really good long sized locker there which um, could certainly house fishing rods and the like because it goes back there underneath where the lid finishes you've got some more space as it goes back and under so that's a really good sized uh, locker there and then let's see if we can get this one open for you as well so you can see uh, what's under there and there you go with that center one lifted that's a that's a really good space reminds me a little bit of the 895 where it was a bit like a TARDIS where there was a, once you'd lifted up the hatches there was a lot of storage space okay so those are the bits and bobs taken out that they had uh, in here um, here you've got your that will be your water pump for your fresh water system um, then you've got your house battery and engine battery um, and then additionally under here I'd imagine is that bilge yeah you can just see your bilges down there at the bottom which will be the low point of the boat um, and the fact you've got two pipes there would mean one would be your manual bilge and the other one would be your automatic bilge that's controlled from the helm station um, you've got uh, your electronics neatly stashed away there that would be your battery charger there and then your shore power cabling and inlets which come from uh, further up the front of the boat which I'll show you in a minute um, but nice and neatly all stashed away in here you've got your this one here this white pipe here that belongs to just like the 6.5 that belongs to this um, shower in there that's your deck shower as you come in off your swim platform and uh, and some cubbies and bits and pieces there with all of your electronics tucked away that's another little hatch here that gives you access to uh, what you've got there is uh, what you're seeing there is the top of the fuel tank that was very similar to our 795 there cut offs for your fuel if required um, and this is probably your cabling and stuff for your fuel gauges fuel obviously under here or in I should say in that tank and these merely uh, twist and then lock into place Again, very similar across the whole of the Genoa range, that type of uh, fixture. 
and uh, gas strut on this so it makes the, the whole hatch really easy to lift up uh, both open and close um, because it's a pretty big uh, pretty big pretty big cover excuse the noise in the background as they're testing some fabulous mercury engines okay so we come down inside privacy door again very similar to the 6.5 step down into the cabin area and straight away the difference down here um, from the 6.5 is quite significant I remember when we went from the 795 to the 895 Mary Fisher um, the change particularly in the cabin spaces was significant and this is no exception um, see this material uh, this uh, type of white color type material really nice and soft fabric um, obviously doubling up as a mattress if you're going to use it as a cabin space uh, and you'll see straight away there's a lot more light in here as well because of these big side windows um, together with curtains there that would slide across for a bit more privacy mirror down the end like the uh, 6.5 but the addition of these side windows is a really nice feature uh, and I like that a lot uh, there's a bigger there's a bigger hatch here as well if I can just contortion myself to get that open for you so that just opens now it gives you a great airflow through there um, the only downside of course of working at the dealership here is that uh, I can't get these cushions these cushions out for you this white one is obviously the mattress in effect the mattress base these ones are the sun deck which is up above us so what I'll do is I'll just move back here a little bit so that you can hopefully get a flavor there so there's if I just lift this one up you can see it's a very similar system again to the 6.5 in that this section here together with um, this bit um, of wood here that lifts out so again you'd be storing that and it would in effect give you a, a sort of u-shaped seating area here because this piece this square piece will be missing and these would be up on the sun deck up above us there um, but it is such a big difference with the light um, as opposed to the one that uh, on our other film there which was the 6.5 walk around uh, as well those keen eyed uh, of you will have already noticed as well of course that we've got um, a sink down here stainless steel taps that just fold away there and some storage here which is uh, handy as well as obviously for cable runs and the like you can see your blue water pipes there um, and other bits and bobs um, but also very good for storage in there now, if you are traveling and or stay, staying away um, over this side this face you've got um, you've got your USB sockets dead handy for your charging um, this just here is another one there direct plug-in now we had one similar to that on our 895 and it was a hard wire link if you like straight into the fusion radio which obviously sits there you'll notice that that's exactly the same as the one in the 6.5 and indeed the ones that we had in our uh, in our own vessels um, and then under there that's another way into that uh, storage area we were looking at a second ago um, access for maintenance and the like um, and those little push button catches again which are very similar to a lot of the uh, Juno features um, 230 volt power uh, obviously these are French um, but when we bought our uh, 895 we had these ones swapped to UK style plugs so that would be an option discuss that uh, obviously with your dealer but it's a, a relatively straightforward fix if you wanted to change your plugs um, and of course the other thing that you'll have noticed that's been added is you've got a day head uh, which wasn't there in the 6.5 uh, Jabsco toilet there a sort of pump in pump out seawater seawater toilet um, together with uh, again these little silver things just are merely access to uh, little storage areas and cable runs uh, but here you've got some sort of proper shelving here and what in effect would be um, storage for your bathroom bits and bobs toilet roll you name it um, but that's uh, and of course lighting in there as well which you can see so you just merely touch those um, and get your lighting and you'll also see of course and recognize access hatch access hatch 
very light 6.5 that will be into the underside of your helm station your garmin your um rev counter and your Merc mercury electronics and the like uh, to give you access to either add improve link uh, or generally do maintenance to those uh, those component parts of your helm station and they even supply you with a little door lock for the toilet on the inside um, so yes my apologies for uh, not being able to get all the cushions out but hopefully you can very much get the idea of a the extra space if you're to compare with our other film there on the 6.5 um, but uh, uh, you'll be able to see that extra space that's offered what of course is similar to 6.5 is that if we pull the cushions up here um, you'll see that we've got these velcro things is what you can hear that noise but it gives you access these hatches again to storage um, from the wooden bed supports down of course to the hull underneath which um, which you know often use very well all these little voids that they uh, allow you to get to with these hatches for storage and you can see you can just start to see more there if I lift that one up but there's one in this center area and then at the top end up near the mirror there below the mirror hello uh, below the mirror there's uh, there's another um, similar storage um, storage area what probably as well will be up the front there is there will be access to the uh, bow thruster mechanism which is uh, which we saw on the outside of the boat there is fitted um, so that will also probably have your um, bow thruster battery as well um, and fuses and the like uh, that look after that uh, that piece of electronic gadgetry uh, these are of course all more and more of the covers that you get um, when you buy uh, Genot, you'll see as well there the, uh, the that black Genot bag that comes with every uh, new boat that they fill with all your goodies, tools, toolboxes, and then you get one of these uh, nice white branded boxes which um, which have your chrome cleaner, your deck polish, some uh, hose clips, some uh, insulation tape. Um, yeah, all all um, all a good basic little set of tools that uh, that gets you going. Uh, as a new boat owner you'll see there as well just uh, where the curtain runs along there that's also a little gap there where you've got like a shelf where you could perhaps pop your phone or whatever or books or other storage um, and you'll see here there's lighting in here that lights up the uh, the interior space um, curtains over the other side and again more storage down here but you can just see there just see that extra storage there but but uh, I do like I must say my favorite bit so far is these lovely um, long windows that would give you that fantastic view not only of the yard out here but of course also of those lovely ocean scenes as you uh, cruise your way in your chosen fabulous area of the world in your Genoa. okay so while I've shown you the inside Nikki was just sorting out the uh, outside um, so you see there into the hole that was on that cover goes the aluminium post there that obviously then provides the uh, support for um for this uh, tabletop uh which is quite a heavy bit of kit and let's just line that up so that's it yep spot on and that just sits there like that so that gives you a table at the back that of course as nikki's showing could swing either way now so you might say well why do you need a table when everything is so bare out the back here well now because this boat this 7.5 has lots of little secret extras which i'm going to show you first and foremost which is a clue is in this little cabby hole here um we've got if you can just see in there that is the telltale sign of a gas bottle so unlike the 6.5 we're now on the hunt for of course where the food station is and very neatly they've popped it here so you've got a burner there you've got a lift up tap there again just cold water you've got the ability there to fire up your gas burner um, and have yourself hot water be it for a brew or for your washing up or whatever um, this bit clips in um, 
just onto there like that so we can just squeeze that in like that there we go and these then uh, these adjust so that if you were on the move or if you were anchored and uh, it was getting a little bit choppy or the boat was moving back and forth then that just these just act as supports for your pan or your uh, kettle whatever you might be using and then when you're finished that stows neatly in there out the way tap goes down and then your lid can obviously come down so anyway if, you, if you've got the uh, barbecue running then there must be of course a fridge where you can keep the beers chilling so let's just move these couple of bolster cushions out the way and I'll just show you quickly that fridge and there we go isotherm fridge open some center there you can get a few tinnies in there you name it a little ice box there as well with your uh, ice maker so now now we're talking fridge cooker space for your bottles what more could you want table ah yes we can need a bit of seating don't we, we do. so let's show you a bit more magic of this boat which is where all the seating comes from okay so like the 6.5 wa this one is also got very handy hinged seating hinges down the sides there let's just move those fenders out of the way for you and once it's down um, just slots into place like that similarly this one here like that and then finally there is a last and by no means least there's another one this side which as soon as i've shunted around a bit i'll show you that one and um, once you've got your seats down then uh, these bolster cushions again you can see those telltale runners that correspond with the um, piece of plastic under the under the um, backrest there and that just allows you to fit your uh, slide that in and fit the backrest on each of them so let's just get a couple of those in place to give you the flavor of those and you can see that this uh, bolster cushion that fits along the top here has these plastic dowels which locate into these holes all the way along so it's a pretty simple process just to line it all up with those holes and then these button clips here just uh, fit into there so it really is dead simple to uh, get it all put together ready for uh, ready for going out and there we go so side one down we've put this back bolster on as well just gives you a flavor of how the seats come up we've got our nice table here we've got another seat you can just see that's obviously where we came into the boat here so this one again folds down and gives you in effect this nice uh, this nice u-shaped u-shaped seating area with your table with your grill with your fridge for your tinnies well does it get much better than that guys does it get much better and let's just slide around here because you're probably wondering what these bits are uh, obviously shore power hefty old cable there hook up into your mains we used to leave our 795 and 895 hooked up to shore power all the time kept all the batteries topped up and last but by no means least these are obviously your cut off switches um, for your batteries for your house batteries and for your engine battery this allows you to uh, isolate the mechanism completely while you're underway um, and then once you get to your destination and want to use your anchor you can reset that which allows you then to use the electrics up on the helm station um, to lower the anchor which of course of course is the last bit we need to show you seats are up big cockpit space so if you were moving around sorting out your kayaks or your jet skis or your water not your jet skis but your um, weight boards um, your water skiing stuff you know this has now opened up into a really good size area your fenders would be stowed fenders would be probably stowed underneath and or at the front um, so it really is a good space this to get yourself prepped and ready for some fun out the back or even a bit of fishing uh, you've also got these little sockets here as well on both sides of the boat and as you've probably guessed already because this uh, as you'll already have seen has got this what they call a t-top on it uh, which is this black framework which is absolutely fab um, 
it's also got some clips here um, and that obviously allows you to fit um, fit a structure here which gives you a bit more cover um, whilst perhaps you've got your seating out and your tabling out it gives you a bit more cover sun cover with um, with a with a sort of material canvas style cover that comes over the back there anyway let's work our way and have a look at this helm station before we head on up front um, you'll see a few similarities first difference though is the fact that we've actually got some helm seats on this one um, that, that's the bolster style I was talking about earlier with a 6.5 in that these lift up and then what it, al what it allows you to, to do is to um, is then if you don't want to sit you can merely come in as Nikki's ably demonstrating there you can come in and just stay sort of perched standing um, which is a nice position um, to be controlling your boat from uh, or you can uh, if we just put the bolster back down again there we go um, and then it gives that a nice little position to uh, control your boat from how does that feel Rezzy? Yeah, nice, yeah. I know it's That's nice isn't it vision. yeah it is yeah. isn't it great vision up there nice and sort of ergonomic as well everything's in sort of the right place isn't it yeah really fits well into the cockpit there it is it's a nice uh, really nice setup that um, as with a 6.5, to excuse the noise in the background, that's um, a mechanic who's been working on some Mercuries over there that have been humming really well, which we had to cut from the film because it was so loud. Um, anyway, so back to this one. We've got a really nice, um, sort of quite a flat profile screen there. Um, Garmin, bigger size. You've got your compass up the front here. Um, and then just like the 6.5 you've got your Merc rev counter your fuel gauge I'll put some uh, bits and bobs on the screen as well which will show you how much fuel you can fit in the 7.5 as opposed to the 6.5 um, you've got your uh, drinks containers there um, steering again manual steering you saw at the back there because our engine is fitted so as I maneuver that you can see that slightest movement on the steering wheel there um, is very responsive the steering this is your um, steering fluid top up if required um, there you've got your bow thruster so generally um, it's um, it's two buttons to power it up and then it's as simple as a joystick movement from left to right to control the uh, front of the boat really useful um, when you're uh, coming in at slow speed perhaps with a bit of wind a bit of tide just helps you to uh, control the boat um, got your additional switches there um, your anchor windlass your bilge pumps your fresh water pumps there you've got your navigation lighting which you can just see up the front there on the left and right you've got the port and starboard lights green and red um, and you've got some of your and some of your interior light switching there um, control again very similar to the uh, 6.5 but obviously a little bit more you know a little bit um, sleeker perhaps if there's such a word um, your engine raise and lower um, really nice finishing chrome there very very ergonomic this one really nice feel that of a throttle control as it slides forward there uh, or obviously into uh, into reverse um, yeah really nice feel that ignition there um, which speaks for itself and obviously your pull cord here or dead man's cord as they call it um, which if that piece isn't connected your engine won't start and obviously the idea of that as I'm sure you'll know is that um, <coughs> is that generally that piece of cord might be attached to you so that if for any reason you became incapacitated at the helm then this bit might be attached to your waistline or your trouser or whatever and then as you or if you uh, came a cropper somehow it would drag that piece out and cut the engines that's what that's about but uh, while we're here though just uh, just have a look at the detail of this t-top here absolutely lovely bit of kit this is really solid I like it in black as well goes very well against the white of the boat um, solid there got lighting got the touch lighting built in that you just uh, is a uh, touch on it um, but then with the screen here, because you probably might not even see it because it's actually really clean, uh, but there's actually a screen here all the way around, screen at the front here, um, and there is a little channel here as well, 
which you can probably just about see and of course yes you've guessed it you can put uh, covers over here and the like um, to provide some protection for this area perhaps when it's in storage um, so and of course the t-top itself if I can in fact I'll probably better show you when I go up there but that obviously provides space for um, to track electronics up the tube here so that if for example you're going to mount radar or similar on the roof that gives you the ability to uh, take the wiring up there in fact if you look if you look just up at the top of that one there you can see some wiring going up into here which would be where the uh, where the brains are for radar or whatever other systems you might put up there but let's go and have a look at the front um, so as we work forward you'll see uh, here these tiny little bits here and you can see one up there that's uh, recessed deck lighting um, again another uh, very Genoa feature really nice when it's uh, you know when it's going dark or if you're out at night uh, the ones in our 895 were blue lights um, check out that film of our 895 if you want to see that uh, lit up at night uh, again this really nice surface which uh, they'll bond on often at cost uh, to add this type of flexi teak to the um, synthetic teak to your deck surfaces you can put as much on or as little on as you want uh, some people will cover a lot of this area with teak similar to out on the swim platforms there um, it's really you know where your budget sits and what uh, what you prefer and how you prefer the look um, and there's your 7.5 walk around slightly raised uh, really nice lettering that really nice numbering up onto the front here so now you remember those massive um, sun deck pads that were down inside there that were getting in our way slightly in there that's because they fill this whole area um, so all of this slightly uh, slightly textured textured surface is then covered in sun pad um, and therefore you can guess what these are for these are obviously uh, you can raise and lower these and uh, they become your lovely angled headrests this window area would of course be covered in sun pad but it would have a little uh, velcro opening so that you could actually fold it back and uh, if you were down below and uh, then open the hatch um, but a massive sun pad up here this again Nikki I reckon lengthwise yeah probably yeah from top to... yes I think that's actually more than my height I'm 5'11 and I think I could lie that way um, I could certainly lie crossways there um full length so uh so a really good size sun pad for i know there's two headrests but i reckon you could probably get five or six up here quite easily um a really nice bow sprit there on the front um so that you have the additional drop down ladder so if you're front end in at your marina or of course if you're um off the front of the boat bathing and want another way in then uh, that gives you a ladder access into the boat at the front and if we lift up the hatch here you'll see again um, access to the good old Lumar uh, anchoring this one though unlike the 695 we've got a lot more of it here for you to see so uh, or the 615 I should say 6.5 I should say get it right um, this has got the remote control so that's um, as simple as an up down and a power all waterproof case so it doesn't matter if that gets wet at all indeed at the end of the day when you're hosing off the sea water it doesn't matter if any water gets into this um, and down here you've got your um, down here you've got your motor mechanism for your uh, for your Lumar motorized anchor there which is controlled from the helm station we saw the switch for that at the front uh, this is all of your chain and or warp you might have a total chain or you might have a mixture of chain and rope um, depending on what depths you're in and the like um, and we used to uh, certainly when we got back in this whole area can then if you've been anchoring this whole area can be just sluiced out with a hose get all the seawater off your off your anchor chain um, so that it prolongs its life um, and there's your there's your clip on there that we saw in the other boat uh, that's just it in use here so that if for any weird reason your uh, anchor mechanism failed then it would stop the anchor deploying itself because it would be stopped by that clip there's your little lights there navigation lights at the front there front cleats as well similar to that 6.5 and a very smart a very smart decal there of espas power 
and the dealership that we're at here in uh, fabulous southern France. Okay, so let's have a look back over here. So here you see what I was talking about earlier. Um, you've got your navigation light there at the front, but you'll see here that you've got various, uh, they're the bolt throughs from the, uh, from the underside framework, but what they would probably also allow you to do is to add potentially a rack up here where you might store your SUP board, stand up paddleboard or um, you know your inflatable kayak that we used to have uh, or the like or indeed a radar frame on the top here if you're going to add a radar system uh, to your boat. An aerial for a VHF radio? Yeah absolutely yeah yeah definitely but uh, that's a nice space isn't it guys let me just stand right on the edge look at that with complete disregard for my own safety I'll stand at the back here to try and give you that distant shot um, what you'll also see actually guys is that at the front here um, again you've got those two little telltale holes each side there and there you see it again just here so again yeah you've guessed it lovely sun deck here but then we can now put a little cover that's tied on here it's like a canvas cover that comes up two posts at the front here and gives you that additional little um, bit of shade if you are chilling out on your sun pad up at the front here so I think you'll agree it's a it's a very different boat than the 6.5 WA which um, which is on our channel there which you may well have seen there's a lot more boat for a relatively not a massive increase in hull length again uh, check out those specifications that I've put out on the film but yeah there's a lot more squeezed in um, and of course um, you know is uh, there's an awful lot there's an awful lot of options for you to um, chat to your dealer and add bits and pieces um, change the upholstery change the electronics add the flexi teak you know there's a literally a myriad of options um, which uh, are available to you when you buy any of the uh, Juneau boats some lovely extras um, so worth having a good look through the catalogue because there's always something that catches your eye and incidentally you'll see that uh, this is slightly narrow again a bit like the 6.5 slightly narrow this side higher up as well so you know you'd be hanging on to this hanging on to this as you were walking up so I think my preferred option would be uh, would be obviously coming up this side nice bit of flexi teak there the rails are much higher sort of waist height as you come up and you can hold on hold on to these uh, bars yeah very nice too very nice too loving that and I love the style of that mercury really uh, really nice looking engine that very nice indeed what do you reckon good old lump of engine that isn't it oh, yeah, the style is great. yeah it is nice that right Okay, so that was the Cap Camera or Cap Camerat 7.5 walk around WA. Uh, what did you think of that? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. good yeah. sized boat, really good sized boat. Was. And um, yeah, I'd love a go in that. <laughs> <laughs> there, was, uh, there was a lot packed in there, wasn't there? Um, a lot more than I was expecting after doing the 6.5 first. So uh, yeah, big step up. Um, and yeah, certainly a step up in performance as well. So I uh, hope the two of those together give you a good idea of uh, the Cap Camera range. Um, thanks ever so much, as always, uh, for watching the film. Of course, you can subscribe for absolutely free. We'd love to have you along as a subscriber. And uh, do join us again very soon for our next film. Thanks very much, guys. Bye now. Bye. Bye.